You're watching Duke of Scopy TV, I'm Elaine Stenson and I'm joined in the studio now by Annie Bauman Raka. She's a founding partner with KBR Advisors. Annie, you're very welcome. Good afternoon, Elaine. Thanks for inviting me. No problem. We'll start with European and US bond markets. Is relief finally on the way? Yes, sure. We could, we could, uh, the market could experience a relief rally in terms of uh, interest rates. Uh, we have seen uh, a kind of uh, very harsh sell-off uh, since May. Uh, we believe that in the US we are heading towards a secular uptrend in interest rates, whereas in Europe the situation, the economy is not that great, uh, the ECB is keeping also a very strong commitment to maintain short-term rates uh, at very low level, so there is less of a concern for the European bond market except at the long end of the curve where the correlation with the US is very strong, so we would avoid uh, having a bias towards the long end of the curve. There has been also a repricing in terms of Fed fund path, Fed fund rate path uh, in the US after uh, the May, uh, May st FOMC statement. Uh, the, uh, the market has, uh, uh, was anticipating at one stage that the first uh, rise in interest rates would happen by uh, June 2014 as implied by Fed fund rates contracts. Uh, and uh, at the same time, Fed Ben Bernanke uh, was committing it himself to maintaining uh, short-term rates at this low level up until uh, mid-2015. So the market has really responded uh, very negatively. Also, um, the, the FOMC members have uh, tied uh, their uh, monetary policy to the level of the unemployment rate, meaning that 6.5% of unemployment rate in the US would be a threshold, another trigger, of course, to start rising interest rates. And we are now at 7.4% in terms of the unemployment rate, but it could w well be that before mid-2015, the level of unemployment rate could reach uh, this 6.5 percent, meaning that the Fed would start rising rates before mid-2015. Okay, and you mentioned the Federal Reserve there, and Ben Bernanke has sort of threatened or hinted at yeah. tapering. Sure. What will happen if tapering does come in? Sure, uh, I think all market participants expect uh, tapering to happen quite uh, between uh, September and December sometime this year. Uh, I think a lot of the, uh, the repricing has already happened. We've seen uh, interest rates rising across major curves, not only the US. It has been impacting all asset classes, especially within the fixed income. Uh, also, we have seen outflows uh, within EM emerging uh, market uh, uh, as well as high yield. So much of the, the, the tapering effect, we think, has, has already priced in. And at the same time, uh, since the Fed is not hiking, uh, the monetary policy remains very highly accommodative. So there is no risk that the Fed starts rising rates. Uh, so monetary policy remains very accommodative. So we think a lot of pricing has already happened. OK, and over to Europe now. We're seeing a, quite a difference between yeah. the core European countries and the peripheral ones. Can you explain how yeah. big the contrast is? Sure, in terms of the economic growth, that has been quite big. I mean, you, uh, Germany remains the leader. It has been growing this year, although at very modest r uh, rate, uh, while peripheral countries such as Italy and Spain has been in recession, have been in recession. Uh, and uh, the, sp the divergence in terms of economy has been quite big. Two full points in terms of economic growth this year has been uh, quite uh, substantial. However, we expect next year the, the spread between those two economies to, to tighten. We expect that the, the Italy and Spain uh, should uh, do better in terms of, uh, of their economic performance. Also, they are showing uh, no doubt that the economy are suffering a lot. Uh, we've seen very high unemployment rate, but also these, these countries have implemented a lot of austerity measures. They have been showing positive uh, numbers in terms of uh, uh, current account uh, numbers. So we, we, we believe that the spread, the divergence from two full points should at least uh, go back to at least one, one point difference between two, those two economies next year. Uh, the consensus expects uh, the German economy to grow by 1.6% next year while it expect as well that Italy and Spain, for instance, would grow at 0.5%.
So we believe that these economies are bottoming out and the lack of confidence we've seen from investors uh, on those countries should, uh, should fade as they are uh, su successfully implementing uh, a lot of the, the austerity measures. And finally, Annie, what's your recommended positioning for fixed income investors and for your clients? Okay, we have been advising our client for a long time to stay very short in, term, in terms of duration, meaning not exceeding four years. Also, in terms of the corporate allocation, we remain very positive and overweight uh, in terms of, uh, of uh, selected, some of the selected banking uh, papers, such bank papers such as tier one paper with step up feature embedded uh, and some hybrid uh, corporates within uh, European, uh, European names. Also, uh, we like to take some uh, peripheral exposure through Italian curve uh, on the segment uh, between 5 and 10 years, where we see that the spread of 250 basis points that we have versus the 10 year of German Bund should tighten. Annie, thank you for joining us today. And that's all we have time for for now, but do check back later for further updates and interviews from the Duke Scopi TV team. Bye for now.